product. Welcome to Gemchem. Now today's video is on chemical thermodynamics part 11 video and here we are going to deal with the value of entropy change for irreversible change and we will also deal with second law of thermodynamics. Now before starting, already 10 videos are uploaded in channel. You can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. And if you are new to Gemchem, do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. Now let us start. So in order to derive irreversible processes entropy change, we know that delta S surrounding will always be equal to 0 as it is irreversible with respect to system but reversible with respect to surrounding. Now from first law of thermodynamics, we know that for any irreversible process, we can write Q irreversible plus work irreversible is equals to delta U. Similarly, for a reversible case, we can write Q reversible plus work reversible equals to delta U. Correct? Now from this case we can use that since both are delta u so q irreversible plus w irreversible must be equal to q reversible plus w reversible. You have to always understand that magnitude of reversible work this magnitude of reversible work is always greater in case of expansion and sign is negative. If W is greater, the Q reversible must always be greater than Q irreversible. And if we write or try to write delta S system, which is equals to Q reversible by T for a reversible system, is equals to Q irreversible by T for an irreversible system and this is much greater than Q irreversible by T. If we take this T in the downside up of this delta S then it can be written as like this T delta S system is equals to Q reversible which is greater than Q irreversible. Delta S universe in this case can now be written as delta S system plus delta S surrounding which we know to be as 0. This total comes to be as Q reversible by T one reversible part plus another irreversible part which is negative in sign minus Q irreversible by T and this in all total comes to be as a positive value as we know that Q reversible is greater than Q irreversible. So we can write it as delta S universe is greater than or equal to 0 and this equality this particular equality stands for reversibility whereas this greater than sign stands for spontaneity. How spontaneous the reaction occurs and it shows irreversibility. We can write finally that this delta S system is greater than Q irreversible by T. And this equation, this particular equation is known as Clausius inequality. Clausius inequality. And ultimately, we get the value of delta S system which is greater than Q irreversible by T. And this particular equation or this particular inequality is known as Clausius inequality. Now we will deal with the second law of thermodynamics. Now, second law of thermodynamics has two different statements, but we can also prove 
the equivalence between these two different statements. First, we will start with Kelvin-Planck statement, which states that complete conversion of heat into work in a cyclic process is never possible. Though we have seen that in Carnot cycle, complete conversion of heat into work is occurring, but this is not possible in original case without any change elsewhere. And Clausius statement states that heat by itself cannot move from low temperature to a high temperature. These two statements are from different scientists, but their equivalence is same. So we will prove or show that the Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement are basically equivalent. Now how to show? First we will consider that Kelvin Planck statement is justified whereas Clausius statement is not justified. Then we will do the calculations and take out that Kelvin Planck statement is also not justified when Clausius statement is not justified. Ultimately what we will see that if one is not justified another is also not justified. So we can tell that both are equivalent. Similarly in the second case we will take Clausius statement to be justified whereas Kelvin Planck statement to be unjustified. Then we will prove that Clausius statement also becomes unjustified. So let us start then you can understand better. So in case of first case, in case 1 we consider that we consider Kelvin Planck statement is justified whereas another statement which is of Clausius that is not justified and Clausius statement not justified. So we can now use this and draw a engine. So first we will construct a high temperature reservoir HTR with the temperature T and a low temperature reservoir with the temperature T dash. Here is the engine working. It takes up the heat of Q, does a work of W and gives up a heat of Q dash which is equals to Q minus W. Again, a refrigerator is being placed which increases and takes up a heat from low temperature reservoir which is Q dash present here and ultimately puts this Q dash here. And remember, since we are considering Kp is justified whereas Clausius statement is not justified, so here no work is done. No work is done in order to get the complete conversion of this Q dash to this part. Without work only, this is occurring. As we have seen that heat by itself cannot move from low temperature to high temperature according to the Clausius. But here it is occurring. So we can say that Clausius statement is not justified here. Now we will see that in the whole cycle heat change on LTR that is heat change on LTR heat change on low temperature reservoir is 0. Heat lost by high temperature reservoir is here Q minus Q dash. What is the work involved? Work involved in this case is W. So ultimately we can say that heat lost by HTR which we have seen the heat lost here is completely converted into work but we know from Kelvin Planck statement that complete conversion of heat is never possible so we can write that as heat lost by HTR has been completely converted to work this shows that Kelvin Planck statement is wrong in the whole cycle there is complete conversion so we can tell that it is against Kp that is Kelvin Planck statement and thus both of these Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement is equivalent. In the second case we consider that the Clausius statement is justified whereas 
the Kelvin Planck statement is wrong. So let us write case 2. Here we consider Clausius statement Clausius statement justified justified whereas and Kelvin Planck statement wrong. So if Kelvin's Planck statement is wrong then there will be complete conversion of heat whereas since Clausius statement is justified so there will be taking up of some work to complete the process. So here we consider a high temperature reservoir with a temperature of T whereas here we consider a low temperature reservoir with a temperature of T dash. Here we consider an engine which takes up a heat of Q does a work which is equals to Q as we have seen that here Kelvin Planck statement is wrong. So it gives up no heat that is zero heat is given up. Here the refrigerator takes up a heat of Q dash and also here a work is being done on the refrigerator and ultimately the heat which is being provided in the high temperature reservoir is Q plus W. Now if you consider the next part that is what is the net work in this whole cycle. Net work in this whole cycle is W minus W is equals to 0. Now what is the heat lost by low temperature reservoir? Heat lost by LTR is Q dash. Whereas, what is the heat gained? Heat gained by high temperature reservoir. It is equals to Q dash plus W minus Q. And here we have seen that W is equal to Q. So, ultimately we are left with Q dash. So, here we can see that there is no work done. But there is a complete transfer of heat from low temperature to high temperature and high temperature to low temperature. So we can say that Clausius statement is also not justified in this case and we can say that both Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement are equivalent in nature. Now we will go for the next question that is we have to show that two adiabatic curves on a PV diagram can never cross. Now if we take the Carnot cycle only but ignore the second part that is isothermal compression then we can draw it like this. This is our isothermal curve. This is our first adiabatic curve and we can join it to show that two adiabatic curves are mixing. This is A1 and this is A2. This first one is A1 and this is A2 right. So this is I1. Here is our point A, B, C and we have to also tell that this is PV diagram. So here is a P, here is a V. Here is the way of cycle going. Here a temperature T2 and here T1 is the temperature. Now in the path AB we are having a isothermal expansion. Since we are having a isothermal expansion so we can write W1 equal to minus nRT and the temperature is T2 ln V2 by V1. Here the pressure is P1 and the volume is V1 whereas here the pressure is P2 and the volume is V2 and this is P3 V3. Okay. Now in the next step we are having BC where we are seeing adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion so in this case we are having a work of W2 NCV dash T1 minus T2 now for the next step that is CA we will have adiabatic compression so for C A C A 
वी आर हैविंग एडियाबेटिक कॉम्प्रेशन ऑन कॉम्प्रेशन वी कैन सी दैट योर डब्ल्यू थ्री विल कम टू बी एज एन सी वी बार टी टू माइनस टी वन इफ वी डू द टोटल वर्क देन इट इज डब्ल्यू वन प्लस डब्ल्यू टू प्लस डब्ल्यू थ्री इक्वल्स टू माइनस एन आर टी टू एल एन वी टू बाई वी वन एंड ईटा विच इज आवर एफिशियंसी इज इक्वल्स टू डब्ल्यू बाई क्यू एंड हियर क्यू इज ऑल्सो इक्वल्स टू दिस वैल्यू सो हियर वी गेट द एफिशियंसी टू बी वन एंड दिस एफिशियंसी वेन वी गेट इट एज वन इट शोज दैट देर इज कंप्लीट कन्वर्शन ऑफ हीट इन टू वर्क विच इज एगेंस्ट द सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स एगेंस्ट सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स सो द टू एडियाबेटिक कर्वस कैन नेवर क्रॉस ईच अदर एंड वी हैव शोन दिस स्टेटमेंट टू बी करेक्ट सो दिस मच फॉर टूडे in the next video we are going to deal with the variation of entropy with pressure temperature and volume and another two videos will come on entropy of mixing and refrigerator so hope this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment me on facebook page